the ratio test is probably the most versatile of all the convergence tests. Here's what it says. It says if you have a series um, sum from n equals 1 to infinity of a sub n, then this series is going to converge if the limit as n approaches infinity of the absolute value of a sub n plus 1 over a sub n it's going to converge if that ratio is less than 1, diverge if the ratio is greater than 1, and the, this test unfortunately is invalid if the limit equals 1, which does happen on occasion. Now, the reason I said this is the most versatile is uh, there's no restrictions on a sub n. Um, for a lot of the other tests that we use, the a sub n either has to be positive or has to be decreasing or has to be monotonic or has to be this, that, or the other. Or the ratio test is um, it's uh, very versatile. Uh, what it's basically doing here is just comparing the rate of growth of the later terms compared to the earlier terms. And if the later terms are substantially smaller than each of the previous terms, then that ratio not only will be less than one, but that limit of the ratio will be less than one. And the absolute values even get rid of any uh, discrepancy of plus, minus, plus, minus, positives, negatives, you know, some alternating type of type of situation. So it's a, a really, really good test to use. Um, here's our first example just to kind of get our feet wet. Um, now notice with the more tests that you learn, you realize that you can do some of these tests multiple different ways. So sometimes one approach might be quicker or easier than another. Um, this one could be done as an alternating series because of this negative one to the end, but uh, we're going to try to do this um, using the uh, ratio test. So this term here that we're adding up will be considered as our a sub n and so we'll take the limit as n approaches infinity big absolute value, don't forget the absolute value of a sub n plus 1 which means we'll take all these n's out and replace them with n plus 1's right? and then another common thing that we're typically going to do is many times the series will have fractions so rather than saying, you know, a big fraction divided by another fraction, we will use our algebra skills. And you guys probably know this is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal of that fraction. So instead of dividing by A over B, we'll multiply by B over A. So we'll take times N factorial over negative 1 to the N times 2 to the N. Uh, that just conserves space, uh, just keeps it from getting too large and too messy. Now the good thing about the ratio test is even though this will typically look ugly, it always cleans up fairly nicely. First thing we can always do right off the bat is uh, take note of these absolute values we have here. They will totally um, annihilate any negative one to a power because things that change sign, the absolute value will make sure that it's always positive, so those are gone. Second of all, 2 to the n or 3 to the n or 5 to the n, if we have terms like that, um, let's, let's keep our eye on these two guys. <clears throat> Notice you have one more factor of 2 in the numerator than we do in the denominator. So as they cancel, we'll get an extra factor of 2. Now, not 2 to the n, but just a 2. And since that 2 doesn't depend on n, we can pull that even outside the limit if we choose to. We don't have to, but we will. So we have 2 times the limit, absolute value. Oh, and real quickly, why did the 2 not have to stay in absolute values? Well, typically things that move out of the limit do, but 2 is already a positive number, so it doesn't require um, absolute values. It would be a bit redundant. <clears throat> we have um, n factorial over n plus 1 factorial. Uh, now the thing about factorials, uh, in case you don't know this, is that they can be peeled off into layers. Just as a little side example, <clears throat> if you had, for instance, 7 factorial divided by 5 factorial, this is, is unrelated to this problem, but in case you did, the 7 factorial, the larger factorial, you could peel off a 7 and say 7 times 6 factorial, which would be 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Peel off the 6 and then it reduces down to 5 factorial. So if you peel off enough layers of the higher factorial, eventually you get to a point where you can cancel them. That's exactly what happens here. 
n plus 1 factorial could be expressed n plus 1 times n factorial and then the factorials cancel. So the limit as n goes to infinity of 1 over n plus 1 clearly goes to 0. Now what I'm mostly interested in is not the fact that it's 0, I'm interested in the fact that it's less than 1. It could have been a half, 3 fourths, 0 0.9, I don't care. Um, I'm interested in the fact that it's 0. So what that tells us is that this series converges by the ratio test. Converges by the ratio test. Um, and that's really all there is to it. So it's um, extremely easy to use. Um, the algebra usually simplifies pretty easily. And uh, as long as that's less than 1, it converges. Uh, and if it was greater than 1, we would say it diverges. And just per chance, if it happened to be 1, we would have had to go on to another test, like maybe alternating series test or um, you know, one, of, one of your other tests. All right, as our last example, we'll try this one real quickly. All right, this will be a sub n. We'll take the limit and goes to infinity absolute value 4 to the n plus 1 over n plus 1 quantity squared divided by this but we'll take the reciprocal instead and multiply <clears throat> all right same type of deal as before this happens a lot 4 to the n plus 1 over 4 to the n you can bring a 4 out limit n approaches infinity absolute value n squared over and I'm gonna go and foil this uh, just looking a step ahead I, I anticipate what's gonna happen here n squared plus 2n plus 1 All right here you get infinity over infinity if you try to evaluate that limit <clears throat> so this would be a good time to use L'Hopital's rule if you're unfamiliar with L'Hopital's rule it's a a rule that helps you evaluate limits that give you an indeterminate form is a great time to use that. So 4 times the limit and approaches infinity. And L'Hopital's rule says when you get 0 over 0 or infinity over infinity, you can differentiate the top and you can differentiate the denominator and repeat the limit. Now again, you're going to get infinity over infinity. I'm going to skip the next step. If you did L'Hopital's rule again, which you should probably do on your own paper, you can kind of see you would get 2 over 2 if you took another derivative, which would give you 1. Um, now that's greater than 1, Now, because you have to multiply by the 4. And so since that product's greater than 1, then this diverges, diverges by the, uh, the ratio test.